You're listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. To the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. You're now listening to the Sports Combs Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. And tonight's show will be coming at you on this February the 6th, 2018 podcast. 146. That's right, 146, almost 150 on the podcast. Big ups to the fam. Big ups to the staff, everybody, for making it possible. As we move into this podcast by giving you a round of applause for joining us. And, um, there it is. <laughs> I knew it was in there somewhere. Anyway, thank y'all for joining us today. And today's show will be recapping the New Orleans Pelicans' blowout loss. I mean, completely blown out of this game to the Utah Jazz at home at the School of the King Center, 133 to 109. We'll break that game down with stats, facts, interviews. Of course, my own breakdowns. Interviews from El Jantry and Drew Holiday as they chime in on what went wrong. And we'll start at the top of the chain with defense. Where was the defense? We'll talk about that. AD played good the first half, disappeared the second half, had two points. What did he, he pulled off his Houdini deal, which I ain't think he needed to do, but he was there, but just uh, just wasn't a fact in the second half. We'll go, we'll get into that as well. The Pels, they got a problem. They ship is it has a hole in it, no doubt about it, and that hole is it's, the ship is sinking very slowly. And I don't know if the administrator said if you're a statistical person or a person with common sense you can look at it and see that the the team is definitely sinking they're one in four since the demarcus cousins injury and um mm -mm -mm. it seems that we have problems houston they're one in four we'll talk about that and what the pelicans can do to kind of steady the ship so to speak then in the second segment We'll preview the Indiana Pacers, of course, Wednesday night, the Pelicans face off in the Smoothie King Center against the Indiana Pacers, who are looking pretty good right now. 30 wins on the season. Victor Oladipo, Miles Turner, uh, Sabonis, that very young squad is definitely playing above what people thought they could. They look good right now. And the, pace, uh, the Pacers will travel here and meet us in the Smoothie King Center. It'll be a difficult matchup for the for the Pelicans as they could not handle the Jazz Um, obviously not Jazz was just smoking hot in this game but anyway we'll preview that game with stats facts and predictions we'll give you our predictions on who we think or who I think will ultimately end up winning that game as well and and hopefully the Pelicans can find some kind of way to get something going but anywho Let's get right into it, into the meat and potatoes of the matter, like I always like to say. For the third time this season, the New Orleans Pelicans took on the Utah Jazz, the the two prior meetings. The Jazz beat them in the first matchup, 114-108. The Pelicans returned the favor in a nice beating, 108-98. And then in Utah, and then the the Utah Jazz said, listen, we're going to return the favor. They destroyed the Pelicans. 133 to 109 and this team plays again next month on the 11th for the final uh, game of the four season matchup we'll hope hope that the Pelicans hoping that they can at least even the matchup because to be quite honest with you they're not beating anybody 
in, that's hit them. The Utah's picking up steam. The Clippers are picking up steam. They were able to knock them off. And they've been playing these teams in the Western Conference. And they, if they don't start picking up the pace, man, and I understand the trades and all that kind of stuff, but they have to start pick. They have to keep the pace going. And they're going to have to get players there that can help El Gentry uh, out. They look real small against Utah. Because uh, Rudy Gobert or anybody looks smaller, small against that guy. Uh, but in th- that particular matchup, AD was playing the five. And I think AD played the five against Stephen Hunter. Since the DeMarcus trade, he's been pretty much the center. And that wears down on you, man. And I remember the, a couple of years ago when they were playing Anthony Davis at the center position. And he was getting uh, beat up by bigger guys to him, heavier guys to him every night. Um, to take on a guy like Rudy Gobert, who was just arms and legs, that's a difficult deal, if you ask me, man. Because looking at what you know what the Pelicans were doing in this matchup, as they they just they just look suspect to me. You know, they shot only 50% on the night, which by any imagination we usually sit shoot 50% or 50 50 and a half percent to be precise. You do pretty good, except for when your opponent is shooting 58%. They shot 58.4% against the New Orleans Pelicans. And then they were absolutely lights out from downtown. But during the second, before, at the end of the first half, this team was shooting over 80%. They finished on the game 14 of 21. They hit 14 tw- three-pointers in this game. Uh, they shot 67% from down. That is insane. Then they were able to go to the free throw line and hit a higher percentage in which the Pelicans were 7 of 13 for 54%, which, you know, not only did they outshoot them, say, well, well, that's just one of those things where they was just hot. They just outshoot shotters. That's how they won the game. We played well in all phases. That's not the truth because the Utah Jazz out-rebounded the Pelicans 50 to 41. They beat them there. They beat them on the assist battle 29 to 24. Which they usually do, which the Pelicans usually win that battle, and they evened off the points in the paint at 60 60. So you're not going, you're not gaining any ground, even though the Pelicans just turned over the ball 14 times. They allowed 20 points off 14 turnovers, as well as the Jazz turned it off 15 and got 17. Didn't make a difference. The three pointers added up, and while the Pelicans shot 36 percent from downtown. Hey man, let me tell you, it's not, it's not a recipe for. Uh, uh, for anything that's good, if you're a, uh, if you're a Pelicans fan, to watch that kind of stuff. But a lot of these shots were uncontested shots, wide open jump shots, easy walk up layups. You can say that all you want about this team that they shot, they outshot the Pelicans. They did outshot shoot the Pelicans. But the point is, is that the transition defense continues to suffer because they're not in place, and they plan they're they're playing this two three zone play. They play this zone style defense as opposed to man to man and it just looks horrible at night because it looks like it just looks conf- like they're confused people always go wide open they just circulate the ball to the guy and find open the guy with open shot and the Utah Jazz took full advantage of that mess you know switch up your defense do something different man just stop running the same crap out there and doing the same stuff defensively and that's ultimately when you when your offense suffer you got to rely on the defense in which we have no defense. You know, the previous game, Dante Cunningham was a mess. The last, the previous game before that, well, he was a mess. He didn't play at all tonight, thank goodness. But here's Coach L. Gentry to explain to us why his team looked like crap. Your loss to the Utah Jazz. Um, they just shot the ball exceptionally well, and uh, you know we could uh, we couldn't get them stopped. We just never really got them stopped. You know, even uh, when we got back in the game, it was because we're. We just outscored them. We never really uh, got in a situation where we slowed them down uh, because of stops. We just made some shots. The looks, the looks that they got, Coach. That was um, what kind of an action was that that was causing your team problems? Well, I mean, they do a great job of uh, dribble handoff and then rolling hard to the basket. You have to pull in, and you know we either tagged and tried to get back out, couldn't quite get there, or if we didn't tag, then they threw it to the guys excuse me, on the inside, and they dunked the basketball. So they did a great job of execution. Uh, we just we, we couldn't find a solution for it. You know, I thought we did a great job on Donovan Mitchell uh, for the, uh, really the entire night. But, uh, you know, with the other guys, you know, the bench come in and 
you have one guy get 30, and and uh, Rubio is playing at a real, real high level right now. And and because of that, they're they're a really difficult team to guard. The learning curve without Demarcus and with Miritich in there defensively, is it just is it miscommunication or is it energy? No, it's not. It's not miscommunication. It's not energy. That team executes great. Just remember now, they scored 129 against Golden State a few nights ago. So you know you're not talking about something that just happened. You know this game. Uh, you know they're playing great basketball. As I said, they just beat uh, San Antonio, beat Golden State. They beat. You know they they're playing really really good basketball, and they put you in tough situations because they do a great job of execution. And then uh, you're forced to make a decision: either you give up a dunk or you give up a three point mm -hmm. shot. Uh, it's hard. They do a lot of single side stuff that causes you to either. You know, like I said, you pull in and you take away the, the dunk, and they're very good at finding the open three-point guys. What, what did they do to kind of limit AD uh, Miritich in the second half? Well, they got long guys. Number one, Gobert is a, you know, is a long guy, and he can defend uh, the ball, and, and uh, he's a rim protector, so uh, that takes that away. And then, uh, you know, Nico is still in the lane learning stages, guys. His second game with us, and... You know, we're still trying to figure out how we can use he and AD together and, uh, you know, things like that. So it's not it's not easy. We just, you know, they just play great basketball and, you know, we we played well offensively. We just didn't ever get them slowed down defensively. One and four without DeMarcus, uh, you know, you, you talked about not giving back that ground that you guys built in winning eight of nine. Are you getting concerned that that's starting to slip away a little bit? Well, I mean, we, we played some good teams, and, uh, you know, this team is a really good team, and I think you're going to see them, you know, become a, a factor. But uh, we still got to find a way. You know, we've got to find a way to, to, to win games at home. We've got to find a way, you know, to continue to play well on the road, and we've got to find a way to stay in the playoff race. That's just, I mean, that's, I mean, it's, it's no mystery. That's Coach L. Gentry, head coach of the New Orleans Pelicans, telling you off top. We know Utah's a long team. We know Utah could shoot. You knew they could shoot when they faced off against San Antonio Spurs. They looked good against them. When they faced off against the Golden State Warriors, they looked good against them. And, of course, they shot us out of the gym. But you didn't have to help them, New Orleans Pelicans, giving them wide-open jump shots. Utah shot 58%. That's 52 of 89 from the field, including 14 of 21 for 66% from three-point range. Might as well say 67 New Orleans was just 8 of 22 for 36% from long range. New Orleans only held the lead once on opening basket 2-0, leading 13 seconds into the game. Utah tied the game 50 seconds later and took the lead for good uh, on a Derek Favors 3. Um, Utah opened the game with a 23-8 run, and they had it ever since. Trailing 60-49 to with about 3 minutes and 34 seconds remaining in the first half. New Orleans closed the second quarter on a 15-2 run. Holiday hit a 3-pointer with 3 seconds remaining, and it appeared the deficit would be 3 points at half, but Rodney Hood connected with a 34-foot at the buzzer. It was all gone. One of four triples on the night to give Utah a 70-64 to edge at the break. It was just that Rodney Hood absolutely murdered the Pelicans tonight. And I'm, I'm just, you know, I don't know if Dale Demps sees that guy, but that's one of those guys maybe you could kind of put him on the, red, on the radar perhaps. How about Dwayne Dedman, the center for the Atlanta Hawks? They looking to move him. You need a big old center that's a seven for that could defend the paint. Dwayne Dedman, man. Think about that name. The Jazz opened up the second half lead on a 14-2 run to push their lead to 84-66 with seven minutes and 13 seconds remaining in the third and will hold a double-digit lead the rest of the way. Andy Davis and Nikolai Meritich shot a combined 0 of 10 from the field in the second half. They were on absolute shutdown. AD had two points in the second half. Rodney Hood off the bench gave 30 points in his third highest total for an opposing reserve player in Pelican history. He made good on it. 30 points off the bench for Hood. Rubio, for the, he was their top assist man with 11. Gobert had 10 rebounds. Holiday finished with the top score, 28, 11 rebounds for Anthony Davis. Rayshon Rondo even looked pretty good in this game, to be quite honest with you. Rondo was a top scorer at half of the Pels. He had finished with 18 points and 8 assists in the game. Drew Holiday was a top scorer, 28 points. Like I said, AD finished with 15 points. And 11 rebounds in 35 minutes, well below his magnificent standard. 
just couldn't do it. Etwan Moore put up 14 points on five of nine, shooting two of three from downtown. And then off the bench, Ian Clark looked real good shooting the ball. In 19 minutes, he was seven and 11. Of 14 points, he did not hit three. They did play Sheik Diallo some minutes. He played 15 minutes. He got six rebounds, six points, and one board. Actually good to see him. Darius Miller looked like car's crap tonight. 28 minutes he played, shot one of three. He only had two points uh, tonight. Didn't get many shots off. Emeka Okafor got a little action tonight, too. He had three points. Mike James played three minutes in the game. I wish they'd give him some more um uh, some old burn. Hey, El Gentry, the fastest point guard you have is Mike James. He can push the pace. He plays defense. Play that man more, like I said about Sheik Diallo. Anyway, we're going to talk more about this game when we get back on the other side of the break. We'll have some more breakdown on this game. We'll have an interview from Drew Holiday, what he thought. Then we'll also cover other news and notes on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Stay with us. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Eye View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G Bound. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, sports world? This Big Q from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle, life spell with a Y, L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the sports coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. That's right. Welcome back to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Recapping the hideous, ugly loss to the Utah Jazz, 133. You heard me right. 133 to 109. The Jazz completely blew the doors off the Pelicans in this affair at their own home. The Pelicans are now one in four. One in four since the DeMarcus Cousins Achilles injury. That signed line DC on the season. The team's now reeling. One of four in the last five games since the injury. That is cause for concern. Most certainly cause for concern. And we'll cover that later on. But let's get to into and finish the rest of this game against Utah. As Utah starts to gain ground, not only do the Pelicans lose this matchup, but this team is in the running. They won six in a row. I'm speaking of Utah, of course. They've won six in a row. They are on the cusp of coming in from behind and catching the Pelicans who are falling through the floor currently. The Pelicans dropped from number six that they were before the game all the way to number eight. Now, of course, those teams are divided by only a game or so, but that's how close the battle of the West is. And you got up and coming teams like Utah that's starting to catch it. The Lakers are winning. They're starting to look good up until the trade deadline as they're hitting on something. So teams are starting to gain ground right around that period and get the momentum 
right when they're supposed to. The Pelicans, however, since the Cousins trade, have been trying to rebuild something they had right before the injury when they were playing their best ball of the year. Mm, mm, mm. Too bad, but um, I guess that's what they call the breaks. Looking at this game, uh, we went over some of the point totals. Andy Davis didn't play well at what he could do. You know, 15 points, AD can give you 25 or so, but even 10 more points wouldn't have been enough to kind of stop this from what happened. He disappeared. AD carried the team in the first. He looked real good. And in the second, had only two points. You have to get him the touches, and they didn't get him the touches. And that's ultimately your best player doesn't score. Then Miritich had an ugly game. His, he had a very pretty decent game, 18 points. His first game, this game here, he played 33 minutes. This is his first time he started. He was 2 of 8 from the field, 0 of 4 from downtown. Uh, he even missed the free throw. He had 5 points on the game and 3 rebounds. He didn't give him jack squat in this game. So I guess I can give him a break because he just jumped up on the team. But Drew Holiday was awesome. Rajon Rondo played really well too, but too bad Rajon Rondo didn't do anything help to help out the, you know, to give more he had 18 at half and he did the, i guess the best he could do each one more and ian clark combined for 28 they had 24 uh, 14 points apiece the master drew holiday so when it comes down to it, the pelicans just were not there rodney hood off the bench with 27 minutes he scored 30 points he shot them out the building 12 or 14 4 4 from downtown he was hitting everything just missed two shots he looked good of course Rodney Hood is on the trade is a guy with their trading and if I was the Pelicans I'd see what they want for that guy he's big he can play defense he can shoot hell I mean you can use somebody like that even if you was to play him at the small forward or what have you you got him for one season run or trust me you're not you're not out of the woods yet buddy you better keep looking for players because the Pelicans are one in five they're one in well actually the Meritage is Meritage got here He's played two games at 0-2. And and it'll take a few games for him to actually start getting comfortable, maybe more than a few. Maybe uh, a, a month's worth of games for him to finally get comfortable, you know, in this in this system. Looking at what the Jazz did before we shut the book on this game, Marco Rubio had 20 points in his game and 11 assists. He had a double-double. How can Marco Rubio have 20 points in 11? I'm not jump, uh, uh, playing down Marco Rubio because he had a big game, uh, 30-something points uh, not too long ago. But I'm saying if you're... Uh, uh, Rajon Rondo or Drew Holiday, you guys could stop Rubio. Rubio got a, a bevy of easy layups getting to the basket easily. The Pelicans allow him to put up 20 points and assist was able to get other players going. Rudy Gobert had 19 points and 10 rebounds in the game. Joe Ingles put in 18 points on the night. Derek Favors went 19 points and 7 rebounds on the night. Derek Favors is another guy that they're trying to uh, move. What, what 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 does the Jazz want for a guy like Derek Favors, who I can see playing center next to Anthony Davis? You know, I, I mean, it's just interesting that the, when I see these guys and other teams of the roles what they can do for your team. But anyway, that's that's the underlying issue with the Pelicans again in this game against the this team Utah. Now they, of course, drop to a twenty. I think it's 28 and 20, 26 and I'm sorry, 28 and 25 is what the record is now. Oh man, ugly win, uh, ugly loss by the Pelicans, man, real ugly loss because that team's chasing you. You know, you never want to lose those kind of games. The 28-25 record, and they'll face off against the Pacers, who next up Wednesday night, 30-25. We'll preview that in a few minutes, but let's get to the topics beyond this game. Elvin Gentry and Nikolai. Uh, well, let's, let's look at it like this. The blow lost to Utah, and we did what we did with that. And before we – you know what? Before we get to the defensive talk, let's play – let's hear what Drew Holiday has to say because I know he had something to chime in after this loss. He was the top scorer. Let's see what Drew had to say about this loss. I think we try to be aggressive defensively, and uh, I think the system was just ran really well and didn't really miss much from three-point line and then getting to the paint, I think they kind of controlled the paint too, so – um, uh, I don't think it was a lack of effort. Um, I don't really think we're, uh, we're not thinking like that. Uh, it's more so trying to figure it out with the, the pieces that we have. Uh, obviously, we have a couple new additions, so to be able to fit them in and uh, 
get comfortable with that. So, um, yeah, man, it's something about these purple jerseys. But. Was, was any of it kind of just filter, you know, how they worked AB and uh, Meritage together in that, that four-core combo? I mean, I, I think they did a good job. Uh, I think they missed a lot of easy shots, but uh, offensively for them, I, and they weren't missing. Uh, that could be discouraging. Uh, I thought we came back in at the, at the beginning or at the end of the second half, but they came out right out again. You knew what they know what I'm talking about. Uh, is it a communication issue? Is there anything like that that's cropping up just with so many new pieces and a new kind of defense? Nah, I think they played well. Uh, I think they played extremely well. Uh, especially with the system. That's and, Drew Holiday breaking uh, it down, nice. talking about the, the the energy and all this kind of stuff. The, the reality of the situation is this team is not very good defensively. But, you know, that's, that's, that's the obvious thing. And right before the injury, they started to really look differently on defense, so to speak. They were doing some things differently on defense. You know, I have to give them credit for that. They were actually – getting block shots and then off the block they'll run up the court and score the basket this game this time around I just I, I don't know man I mean it's they have they you can't you you have Miritich you bring in Miritich and Miritich will help you out defensively they resigned Emeka Okafor for one for 10 for a 10 day period to be a center I guess I guess a, a, a big presence. Although I would say go get someone like Dwayne Dedman or something like that. I, you know, maybe a move a center who can actually run and move, that can run and play defense. You know, a guy like that perhaps. Uh, but you look at some of the things that this team did, and the defense was a problem. Walk up lefts by Marco Rubio. Like I said, he had 20 points, 20 something odd points, and 11 rebound, uh, 11 assists. How you let Marco Rubio? Who he had a, he had a couple of deep wide open three point shots, but he got to the basket real easy. And Marco Rubio is not faster than any point guard that you have. Even Rajon Rondo is still quick enough to stay in front of a guy like Rubio. You know, so I mean he's not a blazer. Uh, you know, to get to the hoop like some guys like a John Wall or something. I mean, come on, now. he got to be one of the slowest point guards in the league. But yeah, he was able to get to the basket in rapid recession, uh, and then were able to damage the Pelicans even throughout 11 assists to get other people involved in the offense. That pretty much did it. The transition defense continues to let the team down constantly. Bottom line, and until you commit to play serious defense, not Drew Holiday. I got to give Drew Holiday credit. The last few games, he's been having his hands full, and he's an undersized too. Uh, playing against guys a lot bigger than him, and I have to give him credit. You know, he does he's, he does a terrific da- job against some of these guys. Hell, he was guarding Paul George not too long ago. Come on, you know. But Drew Holiday is to me is the best guard they have in terms of defensive guard. Now he's a good two way, nonetheless. He put up twenty one in this one. Anthony Davis looks to me tired. He looks fatigued, man. That's what I see. He just, that's why he disappeared in the second half. He's fatigued. He's battling Ruby, Rudy Gobert the last few games. He's been at the five position. I know Anthony Davis hates playing the five, the, the, the five and battling against guys like Stephen Hunter and, and, uh, and DeAndre Jordan and guys like this guy, Rudy Gobert. Come on, man. You know, but he understands they don't have any viable center option right now, so he has to play the five. He has to pick up the slack there you know and that's that's too bad one and four since the demarcus cousins injury we know that one and four and and it guess what it won't get any easier you have utah they're pretty good team that you'll play wednesday night and then you go on a three game a swing three game road swing against philadelphia and ben simmons against Brooklyn where you might be able to get a win out of them and a new powered up Detroit team that's smashing everything in front of them totally undefeated since the Blake Griffin trade and then totally revitalized the team and they basically what Detroit is doing is mimicking what New Orleans has did what New Orleans did which was get the center they got drumming and they get the power forward all all star power forward and which Blake Griffin and that kind of mimics a smaller scale the AD and boogie type system that you know that we see so that's the first team a new orleans style pelican team uh uh, clone team (laughs) but it's working for them and you're gonna see those guys 
So that that's a tough three game road stand. And even even though you can give them the Brooklyn game, you got to go up there and take it. You know, we we, we just have to monitor, man, to see what it is and how it is, because it's difficult right now. I'm I'm just not gonna I'm just not gonna tell you. I'm just gonna tell you the truth. Okay, let's move forward. Let's preview the matchup against the Indiana Pacers. Of course, the Pacers. They're 30 and uh, what is this team? I think 30 and 25. 30 and 25 is the Pacers record. Now, this is this game here. Of course, we know uh, the Pelicans did lose uh, to Indiana the first time. I think it was. Uh, yes, they lost the first time. No, yes, yes. Yeah, well, that's been a while ago. This is the first time they're meeting up. But New Orleans has lost 12 of his last 15 matchups with Indiana, including 10 straight from 2011 to, six, to 2016. Very tough team to beat in that time. In that first performance or meeting of the season, New Orleans erased a 14-point deficit to claim the win. Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins together recorded 13 points and 10 rebound performances. Both of them combined for 60 points and 20 rebounds together. With Davis posting 37 and 14 and 4 assists and 2 blocks, Cousins had 32 and 13 with 6 assists and 2 blocks. Just a monster duo. Too bad we just couldn't get the... We just overplayed those guys. Six Pacers finished in double figures, including all five starters. Miles Turner led Indiana with 21 points, 12 rebounds. After shooting 63, almost 64% from the field, including 41%, almost 42% from deep in the first half, Indiana was held just to 14 of 46 for 30%, including after in shooting after halftime, including the 4 of 12 uh, performance from deep that's 33 percent New Orleans set a franchise record with 21 steals against Indiana back in January of 2016 Elvin Gentry is 12 and 14 against this club all time while Nate McMillan is 20 and 16 against the New Orleans teams now looking at a couple of these things between these guys there are a lot of connections between the two you got Nate McMillan he was he coached the Pelicans uh, Dante Cunningham while he was in Portland uh, of course you know Nate McMillan is the father of assistant coach Jamil McMillan who's assistant coach with the Pelicans Solomon Hill spent his first three professional seasons from 2013 2016 and 169 regular season games he averaged six points three rebounds and a point in uh, assist and a half a game and we'd be readily happy to send you back to Indiana if they would take you Pelicans Etwan uh, Moore is a native of East Chicago, Indiana, and played basketball at Purdue in Lafayette, Indiana. Pacers Thaddeus Young, a native New Orleans, has moved to Memphis, Tennessee when Young was in grade school. Monte Ellis and L. Jefferson both hail from Mississippi. Ellis attended Ladner High School while Jefferson graduated from Prentice. Pelicans, Rajon Rondo and L. Jefferson were teammates during in Boston from the 26, uh, 20, uh, 20, 2006 to 2007 season. DeMarcus Cousins and Darren Collison were teammates in Sacramento. Collison originally drafted by the Pelicans 21st overall in 2009, appeared in 76 games. He averaged about 12 points a game, five, almost six assists a game. He was an excellent little live point guard, him and uh, the other fella, I forgot that uh, move went to Sacramento too. Uh, Marcus Thornton, those are two really excellent picks. Too bad they got rid of those guys so soon. Pelicans head coach Elv Gentry served as associate head coach of the Clippers in 2013-2014 when Collison was a member of the team. Lance Stevenson appeared in six games for New Orleans during the 2016-27 season. He had about almost 10 points a game, five assists, and three rebounds. When he got hurt, the Pelicans said, you know what? We're going to put, we're going to release you, but when you get healthy, we're going to sign you back. No such thing. Dale Demps never resigned that man. He should have resigned that man for what he was doing. He brought good defense. He, he played. Uh, he could shoot the three. He was a good ball handler. He's a little, you know, a little crazy, but mo so are most good guys are crazy. Remember Ryan Ortiz? You know, I mean, come on now. But anyway, let's move forward here. Now with the Jazz, when I mean, excuse me, with the, uh, the, Indiana Pacers bring to this matchup is that the Pacers are not one of those bunk garbage teams that you have to look at and say, hey man, you know, this team is going to be a cakewalk. No, they're not going to be a cakewalk. Most certainly they are. They're a pretty good team, although they did lose to Washington the other night, 111 to 102. But in the last five games, they are three and two. They're playing three and two as opposed to the Pelicans are absolutely, 
not playing good at well since the the since when he got hurt against Houston. Demarcus Cousins got hurt against Houston. His team is one and five, one and four in the last five games. Looking at some of the statistics in the matchup, the New Orleans Pelicans average almost 111 points a game while giving up 111, shooting 58 and a half percent from the field, rebounding at 43 rebounds per game, giving about 26 assists per game, five blocks a game almost eight steals per game and they've currently on a two game losing streak five and five the last 10 games and then you have the Pacers they're averaging about 106 might as well say 107 points a game while giving up 105 a game 48 percent from the field shooting rebounding at 41 a game assisting at 22 and a half a game blocking at four games they have about eight steals a contest and they're six and four the last 10 contests for the Pacers Collison is the only one listed on the report that he actually might be out like I said the Pelicans were able to beat this team in the earlier this year 112 to let me excuse me 117 to 112 the Pacers 30 and 25 or just a game or two games back at a division leading Cleveland club which is still despite their troubles is still on the top of the central Followed by Milwaukee, who's win, who's winners of two in a row. You got Indiana that's uh, sitting in the center, part of the Central Division. Then Detroit, who's won four in a row, a 26 and 26. And then Chi-Town dropping seven in a row. They sit in the cellar. Looking at what the, the Pelicans can do, they're stuck in the middle of their Southwest Division as well at 28 and 25. Losers of two in a row. San Antonio has lost two in a row. The Memphis on, uh, lost three in a row. Dallas just lost the only team in this whole division that got a, uh, that is actually on a winning streak is Houston. They've won four in a row since losing to the uh, Pelicans that night. DeMarcus Cousins went down. So with all that being said, let's do the predictions on the game. Going against the Pacers is going to be an interesting matchup. The Pelicans... I would say the Pelicans will get this matchup. They will uphold and get the win. I think Meritich will have a good game against Anthony Davis and play well against this team. I think the Pacers will, I mean, the, uh, the Pelicans will rise up and get the win against this team. That's just my call. I think they'll break the streak uh, moving forward. But anyway, that'll do it for today's Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. If you enjoy the show, please donate at our Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash the PRO Media Network. Join our social media family, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Tumblr, all of them. Join them. Share our shows. Help us out. Thank you for listening. From Big Q, peace. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, all in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease? Luckily here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell die bricks, cubes, and pyramids. Check out the PoshLifestyle.com. That's life spelled with a Y. P-O-S-H-L-Y-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E.com for all your health needs. So get your mind and body right with a Posh Lifestyle. Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. Providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide. Offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental-friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, 
you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today.